graduated from Mife. Welcome back to your alma mater, KBSC. Thank you very much. Kindly be seated, please. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 379th inaugural lecture series of Obafemi Olo University, Leife, titled Air Pollution Control Lacuna in Nigeria, the Intervention of a Chemical Engineer. This is to be presented by Professor Jacob Ademola Shonibare. Jacob Ademola Shonibare was born in Okini, Egbedore local government area of Oshun State, on July 31st, 1967. He completed his elementary education at the LEA school, Kigo Road, Kaduna in 1979, and attended the secondary commercial grammar school, Ilobu, Oshun, between 1979 and 1984. He was in the Oyo State College of Arts and Science, Ilobu, for his A level between 1984 and 1986, before moving to the Upper Femolo University, he lived between 1987 and 2005 for his degrees in chemical engineering. He graduated with a BSc degree in 1992, completed his MSc degree in 1997, and backed his PhD degree in 2005. He's a member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, a member of the Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers and a registered engineer with the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. Professor Shonimare joined the Obafemolo University as a graduate assistant in 1994 and became an assistant lecturer in 1997. On the 29th of September 2014, he was promoted a professor of chemical engineering with first October 2011 as the effective date. He worked with the Ajaukuta Steel Company Limited and the Kaduna Polytechnic and was an environmental advisor on sabbatical with the Shell Petroleum Development Company, what I call. That was between 2006 and 2007. He was also an environmental advisor with the Dangote Oil Refining Company Limited, Lagos also on sabbatical between 2016 and 2017. Among several other courses, Professor Shuni Barrett teaches engineering and analysis, teaches engineering analysis in the Faculty of Technology with the university. He has successfully supervised and co-supervised 25 PhD students and 55 MSc students on air pollution monitoring modeling and control where he specializes. Professor Shoni Barrier was a contributor to combustion handbook published by the Willie VCH Germany in 2010. To date, he also has 764 technical reports on air noise pollution and life cycle analysis to his credit. He has been a member and chairman of 65 review panels on environmental impact assessment considered by the Honorable Minister of Environment to determine the stability or otherwise on the choice of location for industrial activities in the country. Between 1994 and 2009, Professor Shoni was the chairman of Chemical Engineering Resource Processing Committee and he was the acting head of the department between 2009 and 2011. He is an external examiner to some universities, both within and outside Nigeria, and is a reviewer to some journals of environmental engineering published by Emerald, Taylor and Francis, Inter Science, and Elsevier, among others. Professor Shonibara is married to Dr. Mrs. Oma, Oma Wonuola. Tony Barry, a consultant, family physician, with the Family Medicine Department, Osho State University Teaching Hospitals, Oshogo, and also a lecturer with the Osho State University, Oshogo, in the same department. They are blessed with wonderful children. As a very active consultant on air noise, pollution monitoring, model, modeling, and control. 
He's a Christian with the First Square Gospel Church, Deeper Life Bible Church, and the Anglican Communion. Professor Shonibara is also a member of the Amnesty International. I hereby call on Professor Sh Jacob Ademola Shonibare to present his lecture. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, sir, our KBC, or by Dr. Mumiruddin at the Solala War, the team of Federal ladies and gentlemen. I am grateful to God for giving me the grace in His mercy to stand before you this evening. But for His compassion, I would not have been here presenting an inaugural lecture entitled, entitled Air Pollution Control Lacuna in Nigeria, the Intervention of a Chemical Engineer. This is a confirmation of his words in Isaiah 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my cancer shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Though I am the eighth professor of chemical engineering in my department, this is our fifth inaugural lecture. This lecture is to call the attention of fellow chemical engineers to air pollution implications of those processes they cherish most, introduce the public to air pollution and resources, and alert our colleagues in the medical profession on the need to do more on management of earth impacts of air pollution. I intend to do this by presenting the reality of air pollution around us for as long as raw materials are converted to products we daily desire. It is my intention to use the lecture to present what I know about air pollution as a scientist and to demonstrate the possibility of solving some air pollution problems as I have done with my engineering training and practice. I think this will convey the upcoming researchers that there are a lot to be done in this area. I therefore hope that at the end of this lecture, our regulators will see the need for improved strategy for the management of air shed. Introduction. Air quality is the degree to which air is free of pollution. Man's efforts to ensure provision of basic amenities for survival, among others, indicate that availability of good quality air will always be threatened, thus must be protected. Though this task of protection is multidisciplinary, the chemical engineers are assigned an important role by virtue of their training and practice. I am not only proud to be one, but thankful to God for the privilege. Chemical engineering deals with the conversion of raw materials into a variety of products, including the design of and operation of process, plan, processes, plants, and equipment where the conversion takes place. During conversion, waste that can be solid, liquid, or gases are generated along with the products. Depending on how handled, release of either, either the products or waste into the environment in such quantities and for such durations that can lead to significant adverse effects on the natural use, composition, or state of the environment is pollution. It is air pollution when the release is into the atmosphere, and such appears to distort composition of clean air, as we have in table one. The chemical engineer, from the conceptual stage of a process, thinks about how air pollutant can be generated and controlled. He goes into air pollution control primarily to protect the process and operation for sustainable development. Air, around which life is built, surrounds earth to form the atmosphere stratifying to the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and the ionosphere, as we have in figure one. Air for breathing and the pollutants are in the troposphere. The pollution may post a detrimental human health effect, harm environment, affect climate, or induce property damage. Having recognized the question of the globe's capacity to sustain human activities and the environmental problems associated with them, a number of international efforts, starting at Stockholm in 1972, on the management of earth resources to ensure sustainable development were embarked upon. Three principles of the Stockholm Declaration, including environment, environment policy, must not hamper development. Environmental education is essential, and environmental research must be promoted, particularly, particularly in developing countries. Indicate the need for more hands to manage environmental pollution for guaranteed sustainable development. I have submitted myself for training arising from the policy that makes such available. I have benefited from the formal education provided by experts, and I have been lucky to be one of the few who specialize in the field of air quality. The environment and its preservation took center stage in Nigeria after a secret dumping of toxic waste in Cocoa Port in May 1988. This was followed by the promulgation of the Harmful Waste Act of 1990 
Though the Federal Environmental Protection Agency was earlier established by the 58th of 1988, the National Policy on the Environment was published in 1989, while the National Environmental Protection Regulation was published in 1991. States and local governments were then encouraged under the 59th of 1992 to set up environmental protection agencies, though these are in place for the protection of air quality in Nigeria. My experience as a, a chemical engineer, active in the science and engineering of air quality in the country, indicates that, that, indicates that more is to be done. Sources of air pollution. Air pollution can be from natural or anthropogenic sources. Using mobility, the sources can be mobile or stationary. And geometrically, this can be point, line, area, or volume. With the nature of the environment, air pollution sources can be outdoor or indoor. Natural sources include dust from land with little or no vegetation, methane from food digestion in animals, carbon monoxide from wildfires, and volatile organic compounds from vegetation, among others. Shonibara, 2008, once reported higher aerosol concentration in the Amatan period compared to the pre amatan in the northern Nigerian city. While investigating a mysterious fog that engulfed Lagos on October 12, 2005, and Dimoda 2009 identified combustion processes as sources of oxides of nitrogen, CO, sulfur dioxide, and particulate matter that could be responsible. Akere Dola and Shonibara 1987 attributed benzene, toluene, and silene in worry to his petroleum refinery. While Yusuf and Shonibara 2004 reported air pollutants from textile industries effluent in Kaduna as reported in Table 3. Industrial activities including enamel work could emit PN, Shonibara 2005. No methane gases may be from flares, Shawnee Valley and Akere 2004, and VOCs may be from petroleum refineries, Shawnee Valley 2007. According to Shawnee Valley 2010, thermal power plants are sources of CO, NOx, PM, SO2, and VOCs. Emissions from illegal refineries, processing about 150,000 barrels per day crude oil in the legal data, have been identified by Akere and Shawnee Valley 2015 as major sources of air pollutants from these refineries, or not called Shawnee Valley 2020. Identify processing capacity as a major factor influencing pollutants from sources, as we have in Table 4. At the year, 2017, reported secondary steel smelting as a source of PM, while at the and 2020, reported heavy metals from the same facility, as we have in Figure 3. Mobile sources of air pollution. These are vehicles and equipment generating air pollution by burning fuel and move or can be moved from place to place. They are on road, non road, or off road, as we have in place. One, FAC in Lesion to 2013, reported every PM in the Indian College Vehicle Park Airshed, Table 5, attributed to continuous presence of mobile sources in form of heavy trucks, as we have in Table 2. FAC in Lesion 2015, also reported high fine PM in the same park, as we have in Table 6, stationary sources of air pollution. Stationary sources of air pollution are fixed emitters, including fossil fuel body power plants food processing plants, boilers, among others. These are major sources of air pollution globally, though more in the, more in the developed nations than the developing. Adeshina, Shawnee Valley 2018, reported polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons around the medical waste incinerator, figure four, which confirmed dispersion of air emissions by the waste management facility, earlier reported by Adeshina, Shawnee Valley 2017. Similarly, Adeshina, Shawnee Valley 2017, reported elevated PM as we have in Table 7, and every metals, Table 8, around the metal recycling plant as a major stationary source. Line sources of air pollution. Line sources of air pollution are similar to mobile sources earlier mentioned, but characterized with linear one-dimensional geometry in addition to mobility. Plate 1. Examples include roadway, locomotives on linear tracks, and aircraft emissions. While investigating personal exposures of commuters to particulates in Lagos, or the Kalea and Shonibara 2016 reported that line emission source may expose the environment to air pollutants on an entire route, as we have in Table 9. The air pollutants are mostly combustion products, as reported by Ode Kale Shonibara 2017 and Odola Mishonibara 2021, area source of air pollution. The are sources of air pollution which operate within a certain area. Examples are locomotives operating within a rail yard, multiple fuel gas stacks in a single industrial plant, open burning and forest fires, and evaporation losses from last piece of volatile liquids. Fact and Shawnee 2017 reported gasoline emissions relations in the Nigerian market, while Yusuf and Shawnee 2004 identified environmental parameters that could influence air pollution from evaporation of liquid effluent with heavy metals as we have in Table 10, are some examples of various sources of air pollutants around us. Volume sources of air pollution. A volume source of air pollution is a three-dimensional emission sources. Examples are dust from wind erosion of uncovered gravel and coal piles 
and fugitive emissions from pipe flanges, valve seas, and compressor seas. Investigation of some volume sources by Fakile, Shawnee Valve 2018, confirmed them as significant sources of VOCs and PM. Similarly, Adebi Shawnee Valve 2016 reported high enrichment factors for some heavy metals associated with wind erosion, as we have in Table 12. Adebi Shawnee Valve 2020 also reported several pollutants associated with these sources, as we have in Figure 5. Outdoor air pollution. Air pollution emanating from outside the built environment is outdoor air pollution. And this can be natural or anthropogenic. Because many activities with potential for air pollution takes place in the outside environment, the outdoor air pollution has been found to be major pollution of concern. However, various activities with potential for air pollution removal from the atmosphere, when outdoor makes its complexities interesting to air quality experts and meteorologists, Demo that shown about the 2012 reported the air pollutants mix ratio, an essential factor in air pollution removal from the atmospheric environment depends significantly on some meteorological parameters in outdoor air pollution. Indoor air pollution. When behind closed door in the built environment, air pollution becomes indoor air quality issue. A major source of indoor air pollutants is cigarettes, as reported by FBC K Shone Bar 2004, with heavy metals. But although the Shone Bar 2018 reported office equipment and outdoor soils as for VOCs in the university offices, table 14, while Adefeso, Adefeso, Shone Bar and Akere 2011 reported strong influence of outdoor on indoor air quality. The outdoor soils of CO were reported to be directly proportional to co located indoor environment by Adefeso, Shone Bar 2012. While a linear affair and Sean Valley 2014 reported a similar trend for NOS, as we have in Table 6. At the Sean Valley and Demo 2015 reported that air temperature and exchange rate would have significant effects on the position of PM, with air exchange rate playing a significant role on the position. Mode of air pollutant formation. Air pollution can be classified as primary or secondary using formation mechanism and mode of release into the environment. Primary air pollutants. Primary air pollutants are substances directly emitted into the atmosphere from particular sources, reducing the quality of air. Those that are of earth and environmental concern are carbon compounds, nitrogen compounds, sulfur compounds, halogen compounds, and PM. Sean and Akere 2004 reported conditions favorable to formation, as we have in equation 1 to equation 3, of some of these air pollutants as air to flare ratio and flare composition. Air pollutants can be from irrigation dam. Akere Dolu and Shonibar 2006 reported this, while Anno Zay Shonibar 2007 reported their presence in household cooking, as we have in Figure 8. Fakele and Shonibar 2017 also reported their emission factors in household cooking, as reported in Table 15. If Shonibar and Akere Dolu 2004 suggestion of natural gas utilization, as we have in Table 16, is embraced, it will come with emissions of primary air pollutants that must be controlled. The transport sector generates primary air pollutants, as they buy Shonibar 2017, as reported in Table one, white fact and Sean Nevada 2018 identified the sector as a major source of pH in the mega city. Solid waste management could be their other important source. Ufrazi and Sean Nevada 2004 reported this. White Bay and Sean Nevada 2004 also reported their significant levels from incineration of hazardous waste. Demand that Sean Nevada 2013 also reported annual increase in their emissions from solid waste management as we have in figure 9. Arado Mi, Sean Nevada 2014 reported their presence in waste water. Secondly, air pollutants. Secondly, air pollutants are not directly emitted from sources, but form in the atmosphere. Those of concern include NO2 and HNO3 from, from NO, ozone from photochemical reactions of NOS and VOCs, H2SO from HNO3 from SO2 and NO2 respectively, sulfates, nitrates, and organic aerosols from reactions of H2SO4 and HNO3 droplets with NH3 and VOCs in gas to particle reactions. Shawnee Valley 2011 reported significance of gaseous emissions from natural gas flares in the formation of secondary air pollutants. Acid rain as a secondary air pollutant. It is made of sulfuric analytic acid droplets from SO2, equation 4, and NO2, equation 5, respectively. Acid rain gained prominence in the late 1960s and became a key environmental issue in the 1980s. So for the acid, its major constituent may impact historical buildings, decreasing cement strength, and affecting stone monuments made of marble. Ozone. Ozone is from photochemical reactions of NOx and VOCs, as we have in equation 6, when gas phase oxidation of HCA, HCs, hydrocarbons, and CO is catalyzed by HO and NO radicals in the troposphere. 
It's necessary for the for the formation of sunlight. Ozone is a strong photochemical oxidant, causing earth problems to ecosystems and materials at high level. It plays a significant role of SO2 oxidation in rainwater in the presence of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. Its toxicity occurs in a continuum, and when in higher concentrations with longer exposure, its impact, its impact may be severe. Nitrates and sulfates aerosols. Nitrates and sulfates are formed from the reactions of HNO3 and H2SO4 droplets, respectively, as we have in equation 7, equation 8, and equation 9. Though aerosol formation from primary air pollutants takes place outdoor, its impacts include indoor. The mother has shown about an accurate 2011, developed a model to protect their formation outdoor. While at the new role, the mother has shown about 2014, confirmed their formation indoor, effects of air pollution. If not for its impact, air pollution could have attracted little or no attention. However, my venture into it since 1991 has little or nothing to do with impact, but how on how it can be controlled in the process and chemical industries with attention on the receiving environment. Because this cannot be accomplished without understanding the process through which air pollutants are formed, my focus has been on monitoring and modeling. This is to ensure that air pollutants are not formed in processes and if formed, that they are not released into the environment. When released, I have found it interesting to treat the atmosphere as a reactor in which I have participated on how the least air pollutants can be reduced, if not removed. I once investigated the uh, impacts of continuous human exposure to atmospheric environment, as reported in Abimbola 2017, and the results, as we have in Tibune 18, are very, very interesting. Effects of air pollution on vegetation. Air pollutants can have negative impacts on vegetation, but a function of the concentrations and types among other factors, as we have in Table 20. Sulfur is a major content from vegetation. Thus, low air dose of SO2 is beneficial, but its higher level may act as toxicant to vegetation, as we have in Table 5 and Table 6. Some crops have other growth and yield responses due to SO2. The two major oxides of nitrogen in the atmosphere, nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide, also damage plant earth, as we have in Plate 7 and Plate 8. The roots and leaves of crops can be damaged with high levels of NOx, who, 1987, reported the impacts of NOx on vegetation. Ozone causes short-term responses in plants, including development of visible leaf injury, as we have in Plate 9. Vegetation exposure to ozone and its uptake leave it with negative impacts, as reported by Fora and Achaman, 1994. Effects of atmospheric PM on vegetation depend on their position to vegetate surfaces. It can clog to matter openings, reduce, reducing its functions, and reduce available light for photosynthesis. Interception of PM by vegetation may improve air quality in its vicinity. Since CO is rapidly oxidized to CO2 used for photosynthesis, it hardly poisons vegetation. Effects of air pollution on human health. Air pollution is a major concern with serious toxicological impact on human health, which are not limited to primary air pollutants, but include the secondary. So far, the outside affects human health when breathed in. It irritates the nose, throat, and airways, causing cough or a tight feeling around the chest. Its effects are felt very quickly, and most people will feel the worst of symptoms in 10 to 15 minutes after breathing it in. We are told 2019 reported that its effects on human health could be higher during the cold season. Breathing in rest NO2 may cause increased likelihood of respiratory problems as matters are sensitive to NO2 with decrease in lung functions at levels less than 0.3 ppm. At concentrations exceeding standard, CO binds with hemoglobin to form carboxy hemoglobin, which reduces oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and impairs the release of oxygen from hemoglobin to extravascular tissues. Chemical components of some particles can cause cancer and reduce visibility, which can be a serious safety issue. Ozone can irritate lining of the nose, airways, and lungs. People exposed to its high level might feel pain in their ears and throat. Zao Eto 2018 reported that ozone may affect mental health due to its impact on the nervous system. Air pollution management. If the effects of air pollution will be avoided, air quality parameters must always be within allowable standards. This can be achieved with adequate management at the point of generation and in the receiving environment, thus calling for continuous assessment of air quality. Assessment is required for air pollution management and can be accomplished by monitoring or modeling for control. Adopted method depends, among other factors, on objectives and purpose. This may include leakage detection, impact identification, auditing for status identification, and emission sources identification, among others. Air pollution monitoring. In air pollution monitoring, sampling is an essential activity with method depending on the reasons for engagement. Factors influencing methods include purpose, parameters, period, terrain, and type. 
the sign plans may be in situ or ex situ. Why the in situ methods are performed in place with results obtained on site. The ex situ methods involve laboratory analysis. Air pollution sampling can also be source or ambient. Source sampling involves measurement directly from fixed or mobile source before it is put into and dilution by the atmosphere. But ambient sampling involves measurement in the surrounding atmosphere. Air sampling philosophy. Air sampling cannot be excellently executed except there is a defined theory or attitude acting as a guiding principle at every stage of the exercise. This calls for a defined philosophy, no matter what sample is out to achieve. Eric Kerr thought 2003 to post a philosophy of simultaneous deployment of two sampling stations, but another philosophy guides number of targeted pollutants. According to Hamburg 1971, the overall management philosophy that characterizes a control agency becomes translated into monitoring system design. Their sampling program, their sampling for whatever objectives and philosophy must be pred predicated on a definite program without which essential elements may be omitted during execution, thus casting doubt on the quality of generated data. This must include timing, sampling, and averaging periods, measurements, analytical methods, and personnel. In an environment with significant emissions, SKC 2009 suggested a precautionary ambient monitoring program to assess local air quality. Appropriate measurements and analytical methods require that to establish the basic validity, validity of fair sampling data, emphasis should be on the need for sampling methods to comply with regulations as reported by US EPA 2008. For air sampling that requires laboratory analysis, two or more analytical methods may be employed. Air pollution guidelines and standards. Air sampling must be, more, air sampling must be sufficient to determine compliance level of major pollutants with standards which are limits in a given period. They come as national air quality standards for nations, but some institutions including the World Bank Group and the WHO also maintain registers. The World Bank Group has a general environmental health and safety guidelines where air emissions and ambient air quality standards and guidelines are reported as we have in Table 21. Also, the WHO releases guidelines to offer guidance in reducing the earth and environmental impacts of air pollution as reported in U 2005. This guideline are summarized in Table 22. While some countries operate primary and secondary air standards, others operate a universal as reported in Table 23. From the above narratives, air quality monitoring program for air quality management demands an air sampling philosophy with appropriate air pollution guidelines and standards while investigating urban exposure to heavy metals using bow indicator. A baby issue in the 2008 adopted multi site sampling philosophy and reported lead, among others. With the NAQS of SO2, urban in the 2009 defined receptors, locations that require mitigation attention. Shonibara 2009 relied on set standard for NOS to call for the same action around similar facilities. You see, appropriate program. Dimmer than the Valley 2013A collected particulate number concentrations instead of the mass to define ambient particulate levels of an urban air shed. Air pollution measurement. In air pollution management, measurements are essential. The four common methods for measuring air pollution concentrations include passive samplers, active samplers, continuous analyzers, and remote sensors. Why the first two methods are ex situ? The last two are in situ. The ex situ measurements. These methods require that samples are collected on site and are taken for analysis. They can be through passive or active sampling. Passive samplers, as we have in plate 10, collect integrated samples through diffusion along air path within tube on an absorbent substance, subsequently analyzed in the laboratory. They rely on unassisted molecular diffusion through a diffusive surface onto an adsorbent or not first of Akere and Shonibara 2010 use passive samplers to monitor ambient NO2 and reliable results we are reported as we have in table 26. In active sampling, integrated samples of pollutants are collected by some pumping air through sampler and tapping the pollutant in a physical or chemical collecting medium that is sub subsequently analyzed to determine the quantity present. In this method, the collecting medium and principle of analysis are pollutant dependent. Suspended particulates can be measured using gra the graphometric method involving drawing of metal volume of contaminated air to provide filters condition for constant humidity and temperature. Air samplers, plate 11, and the filter bubblers, a 12, come in different forms, depending on manufacturers. Plate 13 is a typical graphometric particulate air sampling. The in-situ measurements. The in-situ air pollution assessment involves measurements at assessment site with results obtained on the field. Though no analysis required in the laboratory, there may be the need for data handling off-site. It comes as automatic, continuous analyzers or remote sensors. 
Automatic samples are physical or chemical property of pollutants to measure its concentration in continuously collected samples. They adopt different methods for analysis depending on air pollutants. For example, air no automatic samplers use chemiluminescence detectors, as we have in figure 10, while SO2 uses fluorescence, near fluorescent analyzers. In radiate air sample with UV light at 2.13.8 nanometer. Carbon monoxide analyzers operate on infrared absorption principle, but ozone analyzers operate on monotonic ultraviolet absorption, while other carbon analyzers use flame ionization detector or photon ionization detector, the choice of analyzers. The institute air pollution assessment using automatic online analyzers are guided by several factors, including the target air pollutants. The standards of monitored air pollutants must be in mind when making choice as we have in Table 23. An analyzer for monitoring ambient NOx must have a resolution of 0 0.01 ppm, since daily NOx limit is 75 to 113 microgram per cubic meter, which is 0 0.04 to 0 0.06 ppm, while the one for ambient NH3 may have a resolution of 0 0.1 ppm, since its standard is 0 0.28 ppm. The daily limit of ambient CO is 10 ppm, thus a monitor for its ambient level may have a resolution of 1 ppm. Plate 14 is a typical ambient level assessment using online analyzers. Analyzer for source emission measurements, as we have in plate 15, may require higher detection limits. Ambient air pollution continuous measurement takes place in monitoring station, as we have in plate 16. Remote sensors. Remote sensors determine the average concentration of air pollutant over a fixed part spectroscopically. They provide part or ring resolved data and very useful for linear sources measurements. However, they are difficult to support, operate, calibrate, and validate. Air quality modeling. The key technique for effective air quality management revolves around modeling. It is the use of mathematical theory to explain pollutants formation at source, behavior in the atmosphere, and at receptors. It comes in the form of emission, dispersion, and receptor modeling. Air emission modeling. Emission modeling uses chemical reactions, operational activities, and mathematical theories to predict how air emissions are formed and quantify for generation at source. It has been found helpful in terrains where measurements are very difficult. Sean Nevada 2010 used it to quantify global warming implications of natural gas combustion, as reported in Figure 11, while Akere Dolu and Sean Nevada 2001 used it to quantify VOCs from petroleum refinery. Akere Dolu, and Sean Nevada 2004 used kinetics of mode kinetics to model air emissions from the polyurethane foam. When foreign refined petroleum products replace those from local refining in the country, we took attempt to manage these associated air emissions. Okay, the Ray, Sean Ibarra, 2017, quantify their air quality implications, as we have in Figure 12. This tool was used by Adenero and Sean Ibarra, 2017, to determine contribution of diesel backup generators in Nigeria's mobile telecommunication based transfer stations, the BTS, to the country's air share. Odewale, Dimoda, and Sean Ibarra 2017 also established contribution of Nigeria's electricity sector to greenhouse gases with it, as we have figure 13, while Adepoju and Sean Ibarra 2018 reported contribution of road transport system to Lagos criteria air pollutants using this same tool, as we have in figure 14. Yusuf, Sean Ibarra 2018 used emission prediction to quantify landfill gas emissions from municipal solid waste, as reported in figure 15, air dispersion modeling. There are two levels of application, of air, of application in air dispersion modeling. Why the first is for screening, the second involves ground level concentrations associated with air emissions. The commonly adopted guiding equation, equation 11, is in screening, is given by Anna et al., 1996, as we have in equation 11, where Q is source strength or emission rate of air pollutants. The screening equation signifies how modeling equation works, guiding on how its output is interpreted. Mass balance on a, small volume control, on a small control volume of air pollutants emitted by a source and traveling in a plume gives a simplified diffusion equation that describes a continuous cloud of material dispersing a turbulent flow, as we have in equation 12. Many assumptions guide equation 12, and its analytical solution gives the Gaussian plume model, the core of most air emission dispersion models. Its resolution as obtained in equation 13. Different form of equation 13 gives the bedrock of most air emission dispersion modeling, guided by the Gaussian plume model. Some dispersion modeling software from these are ADMS, AirMod, ATSTEP, and CARPOF, among others. John Nevada and AD 2009 used AirMod to determine impacts of an integrated oil and gas plant on ambient air quality, as we have in figure 16. Why demand that? 
shall never have a touch. 2010, use the ISCL mode to determine impacts of particulates. The model shall never have a touch in 2015, also use the air mode to determine the impacts of airport activities in the Nigerian city. Okay, they shall never have a touch. 2015, and now this semi shall never have a touch. 2015, use the air emission dispersion modeling to define air quality management for air pollutants from electric power generators. Fakele, okay, and shall never have a 2018, use the tool to investigate impacts of cement plants on ambient air quality. Air emission receptor modeling. Receptor models are mathematical or statistical procedures to identify and quantify sources of air pollutants at receptor locations using chemical and physical characteristics. The commonly used include CMB, UN mix, and positive matrix factorization. While CMB fully apportions receptor concentrations to chemically distinct source types depending upon the source profile database, UN mix and PMF internally generate source profiles from the ambient data. Akere and Shonevada 2006 used the CMB to establish contribution of the Nigerian petroleum refinery to its host ambient BTS. Why Shonevada 2008 combined the PCFA and the CMB to identify sources of aerosol in the Nigerian city? Air pollution control. Air pollution control are techniques employed to reduce or eliminate pollutants emissions. Though important in air quality management, confirmation of the potential of a receiving atmosphere to support emission sources is additional advantage. A tool to investigate atmospheric capturing capacity is ventilation coefficient. Low ventilation coefficient may lead to poor dispersal, but higher level indicates otherwise. Akere Dolu, Sean Nebari, and Ayodeji 2002 confirm potential of worry and Kano to handle air pollutants. Why Akere Dolu and Sean Nebari 2002 reported their ventilation coefficient? Sean Nebari, Fakele, and Ade 2016 reported missing height for a, southwest, a, a southwestern busy air share, resulting good ventilation coefficient compared with the required 6,000 square meter per second limit, as we have in figure on 19. Air pollution control systems are based on information concerning stream for treatment. Ade Juma, Sean Nevada and Lai 2010, reported the benefit of air pollution control using biofiltration, while Okede Re, Sean Nevada 2013, reported advantage of cyclone inclination. Reported advantage of cyclone in air pollution control. Similarly, Okede Re, Sean Nevada 2014, identified cyclone Cone inclination as an essential parameter that must be considered in the use of cyclone. They were to 2024, reported good results when X shell was investigated for CO emission control, air pollution challenges in Nigeria. Though air pollution problem in Nigeria is similar to what is obtainable in most developing nations, the major challenge in this country has to do with the present management approach. Both natural and anthropogenic sources of air pollution are common in the country just as the primary and secondary air pollutants are found everywhere around us. Nigeria has outdoor air pollution to control for improved air quality, even as our indoor air pollution problem daily calls for attention. The challenges posed by stationary sources for air pollution in Nigeria are similar to those from the mobile sources. However, the new efforts are being made to control those from stationary sources, while there appears to be insufficient attention given to mobile sources associated air pollution. Air pollution from domestic, commercial, and industrial sources in Nigeria is significant, thus impacting negatively on the next country's air share. Our previous studies are serially presented in this lecture confirm this position. Natural sources of air pollution in Nigeria. Nigeria has white fire and amatan dust to contend with. While investigating sources of air pollution in the Nigerian city, Sean Nebaret of 2008 identified amatan dust as the major source. Abdul Rahim and Sean Nebaret 2020 reported frequent burnings in the grassland of West Africa, including Nigeria, as sources of gases and PM. While simulating experimental fires, as in white fire, Abdul Rahim and Sean Nebaret 2021 reported impacts in the ecosystem that was further investigation. Windy condition in the country causes dust resuspension in the dry season, and whenever this occurs, there is elevated suspended particulate matter concentration in the atmosphere, as reported by Odell Diron and Sean Evare 2021, and to project sources of air pollution in Nigeria. As natural sources of air pollution are present in Nigeria, so are the man made. Though several industrial activities have been identified as the major anthropogenic sources of air pollution in Nigeria, Sean Ibarra and Dimoida 2009, Dimoida and Sean Ibarra and Akari 2009, and Fakin and Sean Ibarra 2020 identified combustion activities, even in the industries, as prominent in their emissions into the country's air basin. And, and emission inventory by Sean Ibarra 2022 identified PMS combustion, as we have in figure 20, ADO combustion, figure 21, airports operation, figure 22. 
Bleary or precious, figure 23, as solid waste combustion, figure 24, as major anthropogenic sources of air pollution in Nigeria. These are, in addition to seaports operation, table 28, rail transportation, table 29, oil and gas operations, table 30, and other sources earlier reported in some of our studies. Primary and secondary air pollutants in Nigeria. Earlier, either natural or anthropogenic, primary and secondary air pollutants are all over Nigeria though with attention on the former than the later. Shonibari 2011, reported gaseous emissions from natural gas flares across Niger data, contributing to formation of secondary air pollutants. Demand that Shonibari and Akkadi 2011 developed a model to predict, for me, to, to predict formation rates of these secondary air pollutants. In addition to secondary air pollutants in the outdoor environment, Adeno, Demand and Shonibari 2014 reported their formation indoor. It is required that more attention is given to secondary air pollutants regulation in the Nigerian ambient environment. Outdoor and indoor air pollution in Nigeria. Either natural or anthropogenic, air pollutants are present everywhere we turn in the country. The importance of one to the other and their link necessitate the need for understanding their interactions. Due to insufficient attention to these interactions, many avoidable damages have been done to the environment and earth. It is not news that many human deaths have been recorded in the indoor environment due to air pollution created in the outdoor. At the first of Sean Nebari and Akere Dolu 2011 reported the emission factors of CO from standby electricity generator and evaluated the effect of CO influx on indoor air quality. In Lea and Sean Nebari 2014 reported infiltration of NOS from outdoor into the indoor environment. According to our difference of Sean Nebari and ISA 2020, indoor levels of air pollutants may be 100 times the concentration outdoors. As part of our contribution to address electric power generators induced deaths, Akintola and Sean Nebari 2022 developed mathematical equations to, to determine the appropriate location of power generators around buildings in the Nigerian environment for safe operation with minimal impact on indoor air. If with noise from electric power generators outdoor, Nigeria does not give impacts of outdoor air emissions on the indoor air quality, they deserve attention. Experts are worried that air pollution from the silent indoor sources may receive no attention. ABC case, Shonibari 2004, identified environmental tobacco smoke as a common indoor air pollutant source. Adeshino, Mwogu, and Shonibari 2020, identified pH in ETS from indoor environment or public bars. Also, spray products were identified by Adenio, Shonibari, and Dimera 2015 as major sources of aerosols in the indoor environment. Though perfume gives present and desirable scent, the mother of 2014 and Adenio and Shonibari 2017 reported that some of them leave aerosols and VOCs at unacceptable levels in the indoor air quality. Investigation of ambient VOCs in offices by autoloading Shonibari and Akari 2018 indicated the concentrations that could breach limits as the COVID-19 took the world by surprise. We participated in the global efforts to find lasting solutions to heat being an and atmospheric transmitted disease. And our efforts are reported at the end of Shonibare and Shonibare 2020. Nigeria's air quality status and its future. Mr. Vice Chancellor, our KBAC, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, though I have participated in several air quality campaigns all over Nigeria, as we have in Figure 25, I have no sufficient data to make pronouncements about the country's present air quality status. But your state could be convenient to land second among the states with source of air pollution, as we have in Vigo 26. But not much has been done because of its present low level of environmental management awareness. Lagos and local states have been very active on the control of what comes into the air basin. Thus, they have received more attention from our activities with every sense of humility, sir, and with no fear of contradiction. Our research team is one of the most active groups in Nigeria with every attention on air quality. Thus, one is not surprised that since we have no data to conveniently classify Nigeria's air quality, we have no data to classify Nigeria's air quality status. There is depth of data also in the literature, both in quality and quantity that can be used to do the same without misleading the public. This does not only protect great danger for the country, but unsettles the minds of experts about the quality of air, air that will be handed over to the coming generation by this generation. For Nigeria to continue our participation in the global quest 
for sustainable development, as in sustainable development goals, there is the need to commission national air quality campaigns through which reliable data can be generated for the country's air quality status description at all times. By contribution to air quality management. My contribution to knowledge has been on air quality monitoring, modeling, and control. I am involved in the determination of emissions from some major sources in Nigeria. The results of these studies have been used severally to determine the suitability or otherwise of choosing sites for some industries, while in some cases they are used by the regulatory agency to determine the impacts of activities on air quality. Multinational and national creditors have considered some of, of these results as a factor to determine suitability or otherwise of some projects for international and local financing in the country. Some of my monetary exercises have resulted in the design of equipment and strategies for optimum control of air pollution. I have contributed to sustainable development using chemical engineering. The first attempt. My job into the world of air quality management did not start as a passing interest, but a well-conceived voyage in 1991 when I arose for final year project in environmental engineering. Shortly after my registration as an MSc student in 1994 April, I got my induction as an air quality management trainee following Dr. Akele Donu for an air quality assessment of the Lagos Public Works granite plant. Since then, Professor Akele Donu has not only been training me, he has been teaching me how to apply chemical engineering in solving air quality problems. In, in, in 2000, with his permission, I provided my first consultancy service to Professor B.O. Solomon in Kano. Between then and now, I have been involved in several studies as a researcher and consultant on air quality, noise, and life cycle analysis. It has been very, very interesting. Air quality knowledge acquisition. Mr. Vice Chancellor, our KBAC, having realized the huge benefit if trained with Professor Akere Dolu as an air quality specialist, I did not bother to look elsewhere in my knowledge acquisition on the subject matter. Not even the promise of better research environment in Europe or America will lure me out of the laboratory here in Ilefe. I just, want to, I just wanted to be like him in the application of chemical engineering to resolve air quality challenges. In 1997, I got my MSc degree. While in 2005, I was awarded the PhD degree in chemical engineering under a supervision in the same laboratory. I was briefly at the ICTP, Italy, to acquire more knowledge. And I've attended several conferences, workshops, and trainings, both locally and internationally, on the same subject matter. If I must confess, the style of Professor Kerenu in making available to me all what is needed to be equipped with the required skill for a successful career in air quality monitoring, modeling, and control has been wonderful. It couldn't have been better. Air pollution monitoring. I have authored and co-authored 193 scientific articles in reputable journals and conference proceedings with about 36% focusing on air pollution monitoring, as we have in Figure 27. I have also authored and co-authored 768 technical reports and 29% are on monitoring, as we have in Figure 28. Some of these established baseline air quality parameter, parameters for proposed activities in environmental impact assessment, while some determine impact of ongoing activities on ambient air quality in environmental audit and post impact assessment. Some of the most activities hold for specific air pollutants. I have been involved in several air quality monitoring, but if I must confess, some bring sad memories. These include the Dana Air Flight 0992 crash of 73 June 2012. The indoor air quality assessment in the office, office space of our Federal Resources Nigeria Limited after its fire incident of 21 July 2023, and some of BPE industrial facilities environmental audit, among others. This notwithstanding, it has been great teaching and practicing air quality management. Air pollution modeling. We had an engagement in the late 90s on the gas flares efficiency. Because flares operate at temperatures of 1,000 to 1,200 degrees Celsius, it is difficult to carry out the direct emission measurements required for efficient determination. To solve the problem, I carried out a modeling study that eventually resulted in my PhD thesis as reported in Shonibare 2005. This did not only arouse my interest in air pollution modeling, but has made me an expert 
from Nigeria. As presented in Figure 27, 67 of our published works are on emission modeling, while 215 of technical reports are on the same subject matter. Though developmental projects are require air quality modeling, this is not the practice in Nigeria. And the reason some projects that require international funding do have challenges with environmental clearance, even when the same has been secured by local regulators. I have been privileged to intervene some of this, and we have succeeded in clearing the fatal flaws using modeling to diagnose source emission facilities. Emission modeling must be periodically carried out on them in Nigeria. Air pollution control. I have been involved in air quality monitoring and modeling to understand the extent of damages and put in place adequate control measures. About 56 of my journal conference articles, as we have in Figure 27, address air pollution control. Why 202 of the technical reports, as we have in Figure 28, focus on it? Our experience around facilities emitting air pollutants in the country indicate that little or no attention is given to performance of air pollution control equipment. Unfortunately, there is no provision, provision for the regulators to demand for performance efficiency from owners and operators of air pollution control equipment, a lacuna in air pollution control regulation in Nigeria. We have commissioned some studies around this, and our findings call for regulators' attention on air pollution control equipment operation in Nigeria with emphasis on performance efficiency determination. Running out air quality specialist, Mr. Vice Chancellor, by KBAC, ladies and gentlemen, I have supervised and co-supervised 54 PMS, MSc and 25 PhD students. One of them now, one of them now is a professor in Lado Kaketona University of Technology. While five others are associate professors in Landmark University, Covenant University, University of Illinois. Febawala University and Associated University. In 2019, our publication, Dollar Book Pola Shon Eba 2019, won the best paper award in the Taylor and Francis Journal, while another, Ayo Daily and Shon 2016, was used for a gap analysis by a multinational creditor, and the outcome gave us a study that kept us busy during the COVID-19 lockdown. Some of our studies have shown that we can improve the country's energy mix to reduce our reliance on the national grid and reduce air pollution why two of our doctoral and reduce air pollution? Why two of our doctoral thesis concluded that if Nigeria can shift our attention away from the present refined petroleum products marketing deregulation to refined petroleum products production deregulation and legalize artisanal petroleum refineries operations of Niger Delta, the present gap between our refined petroleum products demand and supply can be reduced with significant air pollution reduction. This is reported in Onopo Shonibareto 2020. To the glory of God, all my postgraduate students presented for oral examinations passed, and none of them, nor the postgraduate student school, has ever accused me of unethical behavior. <laughs> Two of the PhD studies were tuition free, with stipend for my professional friendship with the now defunct P and G Ibadan. I restrict research topics to those within which we can get facilities in our laboratory on this campus or in the industries and consulting firms with which we have cordial relationship. To all my postgraduate students sitting in this lecture and those who could not make it, I appreciate you all for your cooperation during the period within which we work together. You have been my source of encouragement and strength in my chosen career. I may want to report that in addition to my postgraduate students' preparation for examination, I've also been privileged to examine 33 doctoral and 73 MSc theses for other universities in Nigeria and other countries. Four out of the University for Hair Quality Intervention. Between 2006 and 2007, I was on sabbatical appointment as environmental advisor with the Shell Petroleum Development Company, or TACOT. Similarly, from 2016 and 2017, I went on sabbatical as advisor environment with the Dangote Oil Refining Company Limited, Ikoyi, Lagos. Though the conditions of service of the two industrial outings were far better than what is available in the university, a number of them was I tempted to stay back or abandon my chosen profession as a university lecturer. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my KBC, an environmental data management company, even reserves his office of technical director for me, but yet I am here enjoying my teaching, research, and community service that I do in the Obafemi University. 
not minding how professors are being treated in Nigeria. It is sad to report that though I was lucky to get some meaningful results to my satisfaction, when with the SPDC, the story was different as the resident air quality specialist with the Dangote refinery. I daily pray for the refinery to commence operation like the Dangote fertilizer, the sister company, where I also served as the resident air quality specialist when on the same sabbatical with the group during the same period. Conclusion and recommendations. The Vice Chancellor, the KBC, ladies and gentlemen, this is the best I could get out of my activities, spanning about 30 years, and summarized in this inaugural lecture. The details are presented in my 141-page CV. From this lecture, one can conclude that, one, air pollution can be from natural or anthropogenic activities, indoor or outdoor. Two, air pollution causes environmental and earth damages. Three, there are many air pollutants, but the middle ones attracting attention are CO, NO2, NO, ground level ozone, PM, SO2, hydrocarbons, and lead. Four, if primary air pollutants are not controlled, they can become precursors for the formation of secondary pollutants. Five, the available air quality data in Nigeria are not sufficient to classify its air shade. And six, Nigeria needs to give more attention to its air quality management effort. For the deserved attention from most stakeholders on air quality management in Nigeria, it is recommended that, one, the federal government should, as a matter of urgency, establish a body to integrate the present illegal refinery of the Niger data into our crude oil refining portfolio to regulate the activities for air pollution control. The damage they do at the moment is very, very small. Environmental regulators in Nigeria should harmonize the country's ambient air quality and source emission standards to put an end to the present confusion. Three, Nigeria should commence periodic efficiency determination of air pollution control equipment installed and operated by air polluters in the country. Four, there should be incorporation of air emission dispersion modeling into environmental impact assessment and environmental audit in Nigeria. Five, there should be incorporation of social emissions monitoring into environmental audit in the country. And six, Nigeria should embark on national air quality monitoring program to create national data bank for air quality management. Closing remarks. Our Lord was faithful to my parents, Mr. Timothy Adeyinka and Mrs. Felicia Lula Michonne Barre of blessed memory to have allowed this lecture to him only be the glory. I am grateful for their love. Professor Kelly Lulu must have understood my daddy's letter to him in 1997 than his contents. He is more than a mentor. He tolerated my excesses and protected me. May the Lord always raise help for his children more than he supported me. Professor Kuku also protected me in this system. You are highly appreciated, sir. Mr. David Doe, he brought into chemical engineering department as a GA in 1994 and ensured that I built a career as an academic. He was a great uncle. Alaji Hassan Arugundade provided financial support in the beginning of my MSc. While Alaji Adibu Egaraba today was always there. My cousins, the OLU days, Doko Tolas and Adelikis, I appreciate your love and support. Mr. Julius, Adelikis' intervention cannot be forgotten. Without my years in Kaduna, Mr. J. A. O. Yelu Day, I might not have turned out this way. May the Lord continue to sustain his family. To my late cousin, Adele Mitokotola, I am grateful for your friendship. To my friends in Okini, Ilobu Grammar School, Oshobo, and Kaduna, I appreciate your love while growing up. Mr. Kadi Yelu Day and Barista Maurice Ode today, I cannot thank you enough. My people in Okini descendants, you know, thank you for being there. Also to our pastors and members of congregation in St. George's Anglican Church or Kini, Deeper Life Campus for his Fellowship, Ilefe, Four Square Gospel Church or Ramfe, Ilefe, and Four Square Gospel Church, Nadez to Shobo, your love and support are appreciated. I also appreciate the love from friends and them of good hope. Also to my friends and colleagues in the Faculty of Technology, thank you all for providing that environment required for our growth. All chemical engineering staff have been my support, those appreciated. Professor Taiwo, Betiko and Oshuleke, as well as Aravamin and Ogunleye of Flautek, I am grateful. My family, students, friends, and associates who made this inaugural lecture booklet free for all. I cannot thank you enough. Amnesty International, that taught me how to write can never be forgotten. The Civil Liberty Organization, the Committee for Defense of Human Rights, exposed me to the vanity of the things we daily pursue. 
I have received Professor Lighter, the CMD of the University of Hospital of Oshobo, and Dr. Falabi, the CMAC, who appointed my wife as consultant family physician. We can never forget how you prevented us, prevented us from being forced out of Nigeria against our wish. Dr. Bela Plus, and of the chief imams of OATAC and OAU respectively, I will never forget your intervention. Professor Walter, this assistance, as the CMD of OATAC, will also not be forgotten. We are grateful to you all. To my siblings, Bosse, Wale, Bumi, Kende, Muyua, Dele, Femi, Kayode, Sunday, Shola, Yemisi, Fisayo, Sade, and Bukola, is great sharing the same parents with you. So difficult while growing up, to God be the glory that we all survived. I appreciate my in laws. The other days of the Pelham, may that be so, they don't make the other day, the day continue to rest in peace. Mama, the other day, I am indebted for your love since the first day I walked into your living room uninvited. The most difficult task of this lecture is getting the right expression to appreciate my wife, Omar Walla Shonibare, a consultant, family physician. We had nothing in common in those days but faith. And even in this, we were divided by denomination. I am grateful for your love and care. May you continue to strengthen our love and keep getting us ready to then with him on the last day. It couldn't be better. Uluwa Feremi, Uluwa Nifemi, and Uluwa Bukumi, the Shori Brothers' daughter, I appreciate your cooperation. Without which, I wouldn't have been able to prepare this lecture. May you all be greater than your mommy and I in this house. Mr. Vice Chancellor, my KBC, the Team of His Imperial Majesty, your being here today is highly appreciated. And once again, my family appreciates your coming. Drawing inspiration from our gospel in my song, ladies and gentlemen, this is my story. This is my song. Blessing my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Blessing my Savior all the day long. Thank you all for listening. I'll save Dougie back. <laughs>